Today's video is brought to you by NextGenT. Are you looking to become a highly paid cybersecurity engineer in only 14 weeks? Well, NextGenT has got you covered. Their curriculum focuses on equipping you with the most in-demand skills through a hands-on experience approach to technical education. In their bootcamp, you will learn from world-class engineers as well as a dedicated career coach to set you up with a job success strategy. To apply for the NextGenT program, click on the link in the description and scroll down to the Apply Now button. Now, back to the video. Hey guys, it's DC here and today we're going through part one of my video series, Cybersecurity Labs. In this video, we're going to discuss how to set up a virtual box lab to create other virtual machines in, which I'll explain in future videos. This video is focusing mostly on the base configuration of VirtualBox as a uh, virtual host for our virtual machines that we are going to create to create an attack defense lab. If you're new to this channel, please do like this video, subscribe for more, and of course, comment down below if you have any questions. All right, let's get started. Okay, now the first step that you want to take is to go to Google and type in VirtualBox. We go to the Oracle VM VirtualBox website. And you click on the big button that says download VirtualBox 6.1. Okay, now on this page, we're going to go with Windows host because my computer is a Windows host. And we download VirtualBox. Alrighty, so let's go through some of the setup of version 6.1.26 of VirtualBox. We click next. We click next. Uh, start menu, sure. Desktop, no thanks. Quick launch. Yeah, all right, why not? And register file, sure. Click next. Warning, network interfaces. Would you like to proceed? In this case, yes, I will. We click install and off it goes. Alrighty, so the installation has finished. We'll click on the start VM virtual box after installation. Okay, I'll just drag this across to the window that I'm sharing. And this is VirtualBox. Now, VirtualBox is essentially a uh, virtual machine host managing software where you can create virtual machines. Now, in this example, I'm going to create a Windows machine uh, later on, I'll create a Kali Linux machine, a another machine with uh, PFSense installed on it. And um, yeah, we're going to create a, a really fun little attack defense lab. Okay, so you're at the VirtualBox welcome page now. What we need to do is create a new machine. Um, you do have the option here to add a, an existing machine if you have one. But in this case, we're going to start fresh. So we click on the new button. And we're going to call it uh, Windows VM. So the type is Microsoft Windows and the version we're going to go with is Windows 7 64 bit. The next stage is to uh, allocate some memory to this machine. Now, I do have a fair bit of memory on this machine, but I only really want to uh, give it uh, 4 gig. So I'll go in here and type in 4 nine six which will give it four gig of memory and then we click next now on this page it's going to ask you uh, how much disk space you want to create so i want to create a virtual hard disk now so i'll click create i'm going to go with a vdi in this case uh, just because I've, I've had better experience with using vdis in the past uh, VHDs also work fine, as do VMDKs. Uh, just, this is just a personal preference for me. Now, this section here um, is, is pretty well worth looking at. The dynamic allocation means that the drive will expand with more, uh, as you put more things on it, whereas a fixed size will just give it however much uh, space allocation that I want to give it. So I'm going to go with fix size and click next. Now the default here is 32 gig. Uh, that's actually quite a lot, but that's okay. I'll, I'll stick with the 32 gig. I've got plenty of space on this computer as well. So we click on create. 
and it then creates the virtual machine with the properties that I have just given it. Okie dokie, we have finally created a virtual machine that took a lot longer than it normally does. Now the machine state is currently powered off. Uh, the operating system as you can see is Windows 7 64-bit. Uh, we've got 4 gig of RAM, it's got a floppy drive apparently, an optical drive and a hard disk. Uh, this is some of the acceleration and Hyper-V para virtualization settings which um, can cause some drama but hopefully we won't run into that. Uh, you can see the display is just mimicking what I've currently got, which is fine. On SATA port 0, which is the boot drive, we have the uh, 32 gig of space that are allocated for this machine. So, next step is to click Start. Okay, so now at this screen, what you need to do is to select your startup disk, which is going to be the Windows 7 64-bit ISO that you have downloaded uh, previously. Now I do have a link to where I downloaded this ISO in the description if you want to use the exact same one that I'm using. So what we do is we click on the little folder, click add, and then we browse to wherever you downloaded it to and select it. Click on choose and then click start. Now I'll just drag this one over here. You can see my Machine is booting up and it is going to now start Windows and basically go through the installation steps of installing Windows. Now for this, we just click next, click install now, it goes through the setup. So apparently we have a Windows 7 Ultimate Service Pack 1. Uh, yep, I accept the agreements. We'll click on custom and then click on this disk zero unallocated space, click next. I don't want to partition the drive in any way. I just want it to be like a flat installation of Windows 7 uh, that we'll potentially be able to exploit later. I have chosen Windows 7 for a reason with our attack machine. Now, the whole design of this is fairly basic at the moment. Um, once I add in the firewall and some logging off the back of that to a log server and then the attack machine much later on in later videos, the networking and uh, other components of this will become a little bit more complex as we go on. But for this initial setup, it's pretty straightforward. You just have to download VirtualBox, install it, set up a Windows 7 machine, and you've got the, the basic building blocks of your attack defense lab. Mainly the defense side, which is what we're building at the moment. And by defense, what I actually mean here is, is more like the vulnerable machine that we're going to try and attack with our uh, Kali box later. And in front of this machine, the design is basically that there's going to be a firewall with some logging to see exactly what's going on and to try and control the uh, attacks that are coming in and potentially uh, block the attack entirely. Okay, the installation has finally finished and my uh, virtual machine is about to restart. Um, so it's going to go through and create uh, profiles next and all of that uh, normal stuff. I low-key miss the old Windows 7 uh, loading sign to be honest. I should uh, I should post the like a gif of that in uh, my Discord server. If you do have any questions by the way on any of this stuff, please do leave it in the comments below or jump into my Discord server. It's discord.gg forward slash DC Cybersec. Uh, there's a questions channel in there where I, uh, I answer questions all the time to people in real time, not so much in the, the YouTube comments. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, either go to Discord or comment below and I'll get around to answering that question for you. Okay, we are now at the setup. So I'm going to uh, put my name as Bob and this is uh, Bob's, we'll make it Bob, uh, Bob's. Super secure. Oh, it doesn't allow me. Okay, we'll just go with Bob's PC. <laughs> uh, we're going to put a password on. Nah, I don't really want a password. Product key. We'll just go skip to this because I don't have a product key. Uh, help protect your computer. Uh, we'll go ask me later. I think my computer is going to be super, super secure. 
Um, all right, set the time zone. I'll set it to my own time zone so I don't get confused when I read stuff. Go next, home network. We'll wait for the network settings to apply. It's gonna take a little bit of time. 2,000 years later. And here we go. We're almost done. Let's see how it goes. I can actually close off some of these little alerts at the top. It's just saying that it's capturing my uh, mouse and keyboard input. But I mean, I, I know that because it's working. So I don't need to worry too much about it. Okay, here we go. We have a Windows 7 Ultimate machine. It's connected to the internet, which is great. Uh, we have uh, 14 gig free out of the 32 that I assigned to it, which is about right. Um, there should be pretty much nothing else on it. It's uh, it's super basic. We've got Bob here. Um, let's check out some of the IP addressing. So 10.0.2.15 on a 10.0.2.2 gateway, which is uh, good. So yeah, that's, uh, that's basically the setup of the Windows 7 machine. So as I just said, that's the setup of uh, VirtualBox and our first virtual machine. We have Windows 7 running. It's running nice and smoothly as we saw there. It's got its network interface set. It's got the right sort of storage allocation. There's currently no firewall enabled, which is absolutely fine. And we're next going to set up the PFSense firewall to run in front of that. So we're going to do this in layers of virtual machine, firewall and logging, and then the attack machine on the other side. So stick around for the next video in this set. I hope you have enjoyed this. As I said earlier, please do like this video if you enjoyed this content. Subscribe for more and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks for watching.